I recently released a video on my number one favorite bat speed training drill that is dramatically adding bat speed to how far my sons and daughters and my clients can hit the ball. But uh, as I released it on YouTube, I got a comment and the guy was hating on my drill and he, he made a comment that I wanted to share with you because he does bring up a great point that we need to address. So as I read you his comment, he says, one, Yikes, whoops, when I put that on there, it's way too hard to read. So I'm gonna paraphrase, but if you wanna see the actual comment, I don't wanna hide that from you. Click the link below this video and I'll have a link to the other YouTube video where you can read it for yourself if you wanna see the whole comment. He acknowledges, yes, this actually does work. This will help you create more bat speed, but he says it ruins a lot of areas of your swing and, and it causes a lot of problems. And one of the reasons, and he brings up a couple, I think I'll make some other videos that talk about the other reasons that he's bringing up because they're all avoidable. But he says this only works if you teach kids how to do what's called crack the whip and make contact out front. So I wanted to make this uh, analogy for you so you understood. If you have a bull whip, one of the things that we're trying to do if we're wanting to crack a bull whip is we have to bring the arm forward first so that the long whip can start to go forward, right? I think that with the swing, that's like your hips going first. Yes, it does need to happen. You cannot crack the bull whip without first moving the bull whip forward. It has to go forward first. But you can't also crack the whip unless you pull back at the last second and actually flick it back and decelerate your hand and, and make the whip crack. That's how you improve the speed at the tip of the whip. So what that is in the swing is sometimes confusing for people. What does it mean? Like, okay, hips are going forward. That's like the arm going forward. But what is it like to pull back on the whip? How does that relate to the swing? Well, if you go and you look at Bryce Harper's swing right here, what you will notice is they do something that's called torso deceleration. So watch how his hips will actually recoil right after contact on a lot of his hits. Now, this isn't the only way that athletes and, and uh, softball or baseball players decelerate their hips and, and do this type of move, this type of pulling back that makes the whip crack, but uh, it, but it's one of them. And so you'll see hips often in hitters do this sort of recoil movement. And that's how they actually create more torque. And uh, one analogy that I thought was great that the guys over at 108 Performance were talking about to kind of understand why this works is imagine you have a mason jar. Imagine I'm holding a mason jar and there's a lid on the mason jar. Imagine that the jar itself represents the lower half of the body and the lid represents the upper half. And imagine that lid stuck on tight. If you wanted to create to get the lid off and create as much torque around the lid to get the lid off, you would not turn the lid the same ways, right? You would, you would not do that. You would instead turn the lid opposite ways and that's what creates the most torque. And so that's why one of the ways that, that athletes are creating torque through their, their torsos, which can stop their barrels and, uh, or sorry, stop their hips and uh, allow them to crack the whip with their barrel out front is to do torso deceleration work. So when you are looking at some of our drills, like our hips first drills, the, make sure that you understand that these drills, they never work by themselves, one, one drill in one environment without understanding who you are as a hitter. And every time that we're gonna put you in a hip first drill, we would always pair it with some sort of torso deceleration drill because we want to train both qualities of of the motion. And if you don't do that, what happens is you have to cheat out front to get balls. You snap hook balls down the left field line. You have to you have to be really early or you can't hit. You can never hit when you're late. You will struggle at off speed. You won't have opposite field power. But what you might have noticed when I show you videos of my kids hitting, a lot of my own personal kids who have been doing these hip first drills since they could barely walk, uh, their hips will recoil at contact. And you'll also notice that they can hit opposite field bombs. My, my son uh, hit his first high school varsity home run uh, to the opposite field uh, uh, here where he has a little bit of hip recoil and he's able to generate power to the opposite field as a sophomore. And my daughter is able to go with her first run she, home run she ever hit. I've shared this before, but it's to the opposite field as well. The reason we're able to do this is because we don't just do my hips first drills in isolation. We take a look at the athlete. We see, ooh, you weren't doing these other things that could be causing problems. And there's a lot of other things that could be pro causing problems be besides just the torso not decelerating and not cracking the whip. Uh, that I'll probably make in some other videos because the guy brings up that left that comment, a couple of other pretty important points that you should be considering as well. But I'll keep it to one topic for this video. But the main point is that if you see that your son or daughter is not firing their hips well and you want to help them fire your hips, you do need to make sure that you also teach them how to stop their hips uh, with some sort of deceleration pattern. If you would like help in how to do any of that kind of programming or you would like us to look at your son or daughter's swing so we can put together a comprehensive program, we have uh, AI-based software that can look at your 
your son or daughter's swing and see whether or not they have the right patterns, where they're deficient in, uh, so that we can design drills that will help them have a comprehensive hitting uh, uh, practice plan. And if you'd like us to do that for you, there's a link but probably below this video somewhere that you can click on. That'll take you to a page where you can sign up for one of those if you would like. But always remember guys, whatever great drills you're seeing online, realize that whatever drill your training, whatever movement you're training, it, you're working with a living organism and whatever action you train is gonna have a reaction somewhere else. And you have to also have to consider training those other types of movements that are gonna occur when you change something somewhere else in that living organism. So if you like that and you would like more tips like this and more insights into hitting on a regular basis, like, follow, subscribe, leave me a comment, engage with me. And I would look forward to sharing more content with you in the future where we really try to dive in and help you guys understand how to make your hitters better hitters.